Most gardeners, including myself, talk about the huge differences between store-bought produce and homegrown produce. Probably the three that have the most difference between store-bought and homegrown are tomatoes and corn and peas. I'm gonna add one more to that list though. One that most people don't think of as having a lot of flavor without being piled with butter and sour cream, and that is potatoes. Now, if you've never had a potato that is homegrown, dug fresh out of the soil and immediately cooked, then you haven't had a potato because the texture and the flavor is unbelievable. We don't eat a huge amount of potatoes, so I'm not gonna allocate a huge amount of growing space for them. In fact, this is gonna be the first plant in our new container garden area. And I'm gonna grow these in three different types of containers. A pot, a bucket, and a fabric grocery bag. If you're growing in plastic buckets, you want to make sure that they are food grade and food safe because you don't want anything from the plastic leaching into the soil. And if you had anything like paint or paint thinner in the bucket, let's skip that bucket. Um, I'm going to put a, a link to a website down below that lists different ways that you can tell if um, your plastic is acceptable. One of the ways you can tell is on the bottom or somewhere on it, you're gonna see the little triangle recycling sign with a number in the middle. Now this one is number two and says HDPE um, underneath it. And that says it's food safe. Now, so Home Depot buckets are food safe. You can also go to like your local bakery or grocery store and they get, you know, big buckets with like frosting or dough. And sometimes I'll give them to you for free, I've heard. I haven't tried myself. I had these already, so that's what I'm using. And uh, you just wanna make sure, there's a slug. Just wanna make sure that there are holes for drainage. So I put several quarter inch holes in the bottom of this, um, just because you don't want your potatoes sitting in water or they will rot. Now, whether you're growing in containers or in the ground, it all starts with the same thing and that is seed potatoes. Now seed potatoes are potatoes from last year that were specifically grown and stored to be used to grow more plants. Um, I know a lot of times you'll have old potatoes that you bought at the grocery store for eating that kind of go past their date and start sprouting. Um, while those technically can work, um, they aren't good to use only because First of all, by the time they've sprouted, you, they're probably really long and they're gonna be weak plants. Uh, secondly, they're not certified disease-free like seed potatoes are. And lastly, a lot of potatoes nowadays are uh, sprayed with a sprout inhibitor to keep them from sprouting. So even if you do plant them, they might never sprout or if they do, they're gonna be very weak. So start with seed potatoes. I'll put a link down below uh, where you can get some online. You can also get them at your um, local garden center. Now you wanna plant potatoes two weeks before your last frost date. That's another link I have down below. In case you don't know what yours is, you can go to that link, put your zip code in, and it will tell you. Now, if you have a very late frost date, last frost date, you have long winters, and you wanna get a jump on things, you can chit your potatoes before planting. Chitting potatoes mainly means uh, pre-sprouting them. And so what you wanna do is about four to six weeks before your last frost date, you want to uh, put your potatoes, so your seed potatoes in a dark, warm area, about 70 degrees, so somewhere in your house, maybe the warmest uh, spot in your house. And in about a week, you're gonna see sprouts, just like this. Now. Once those sprouts are about two centimeters tall, you can bring them out into the light. They're out of their dormancy, and now you're gonna get a little bit of growth on them before planting them. And you should have about an inch of growth by the time your last frost date um, 
appears four to six weeks later, and then you can go ahead and plant these in the ground. Now, there's an end of the potato that's got more eyes, the little growth areas, than others. That's called the rose end. And when you're chitting them, you want to make sure that the rose end is sitting upright. Now you can use um, egg cartons, or if you have a lot, just a shallow box. Now if the potatoes are large, or have sprouts on both ends, like this one does, um, you can cut this in half, or in as many pieces as you want, depending on the size. And as long as there is a sprout in each piece, each one of those pieces is going to produce a new plant. So it's basically a way to increase your productivity for well, without buying any extra seed potatoes. Now, if you do cut them, any of the cut sections need to be sealed off by dipping them in either horticultural sulfur or wood ash from your fireplace or wood burning stove. You want to let them sit for about a week or two until you can feel them and there's kind of a nice leathery callus formed. Now, if you want fewer but larger potatoes, you're going to want to rub off um, all but three or four shoots. And so in this case, there's shoots. There's also eyes that I see forming. I'm going to go ahead and rub those off if I want large potatoes. Now, you're not going to get as many potatoes, but they'll be bigger. If you want smaller, um, potatoes and a lot of them let it grow as many shoots as it wants to now it's time to plant the potatoes um, as far as location they need about six to eight hours of direct sunlight the more the better and for a container you want it to be optimally at least five gallons and you want it to be taller rather than wider now to start off with you're gonna put three to four inches of potting mix in the bottom of your container. I'm using a raised bed potting mix that's organic that I got from Home Depot. It's what I have in all these raised beds. Now I mixed this potting mix with a bone meal. Bone meal is a great source of phosphorus and calcium and that is going to give the potatoes a stronger root system. More roots for potatoes means more potatoes since potatoes are part of the root system. Once that's in there, I'm going to put three potatoes in a five gallon bucket. We're going to cover that with about six inches of the potting mix. Now, if you watched my tomato video, this is pretty much it on a larger scale. Instead of the solo cup, we have a bucket and we're leaving lots of head space between the soil and the top of the bucket because potatoes are related to tomatoes. They're both members of the nightshade family. And that means that they grow roots along their stem. So just like in the tomato video, as the potato plants grow toward the top of this bucket, every week or two, we're gonna add in more potting mix to basically bury that stem as it grows. And you can leave the leaves on, just cover them right up, and always leave a good amount of leaves at the top. But that is going to now add extra room in the bucket along that stem for the potatoes to grow and mature. You're going to continue doing that until the soil is about an inch from the top of the container. Not only does adding soil uh, give more space for potatoes as the stems grow, but it's going to keep covering the potatoes to protect them from sunlight. Now, if your potatoes are exposed to sunlight, they will turn green and become poisonous. In the ground growing potatoes, you're also going to mound the dirt around those as they grow for the exact same reasons. Make sure the soil stays moist at all times and every couple of weeks we're gonna fertilize with my favorite fertilizer, fish and kelp. And the great thing about kelp, for potatoes especially, is it adds a good amount of potassium to the soil. Interestingly enough, potatoes take more potassium from the soil than any other plant. So we want to make sure it's there in abundance. So every two weeks, give it a good uh, helping of fish and kelp fertilizer. I have a link down below to my favorite one. If you live in an area that is prone to getting blight on your potatoes or tomatoes, 
then there's something you can do. And if you go back and remember the main tomato video that you probably have all seen, that's probably how you found me, is the aspirin spray. 600 milligrams uh, of aspirin in a gallon of water. And you're gonna spray that on the leaves every two weeks as a preventative. And that's gonna keep the, uh, the blight away, hopefully. It seems to work with the tomatoes and uh, we don't get a lot of blight here around on potatoes, but they're the same family. And actually that aspirin spray works on all, fam all nightshade family plants, which is potatoes, tomatoes, peppers, and eggplant. Uh, one of the questions in the last video that I got a lot was why uncoated aspirin? And the only reason is that sometimes the coating on the aspirin will gum up your sprayer nozzle. And so I know it's kind of hard to find. I put a link down below to the aspirin that I found that is uncoated and that's the one I use. So the only thing left is the harvest. Now you're gonna know it's time to harvest your potatoes when your plant blooms and the leaves start to turn yellow and die off. And then all you have to do is take your container, turn it upside down, dump out the entire root ball and have fun digging for treasure to see how many potatoes you were able to grow in one bucket. It's a great thing to do with kids. They absolutely love it. Now, why don't you go ahead and get your seed potatoes, get them planted, grow them along with me, and then in a few months, we'll harvest them all together and see who got the biggest bundle of tomatoes in their bucket. If you guys learned something or enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up, it helps a lot. Make sure you're subscribed, hit the bell icon for notifications, and I'll see you guys next time.